bringing onto the show Kajatur Viabrian, who is one of the co-founders at Treg. Treg is a company that's looking to revitalize the code quality space in the AI era. We get into some controversial topics like will code quality even matter in a few years with AI. We call this segment Unfiltered Sake. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sake and Cyber. I'm pretty thrilled to be here with a special guest all the way from Armenia, and that's Kajator. Okay, but yeah, welcome. Thanks so much for joining thanks me. Thanks for Sakiba. having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we're going to get into a little bit about code quality. Mm-hmm. You're one of the co-founders of a really interesting uh, company called Treg, which is using AI to assist in, in code quality. Uh, before we get into that... yeah. We have some sake here yeah. to try. So we're going to go half and half uh, this this day. It is a, it's a Wednesday, so we're going to go half non-alcoholic okay. sake and half <laughs> alcoholic sake. Good, okay. good, good. <laughs> Just okay. so we're not yeah. floating by the end of Mid-week, it. Midweek, yeah. So we'll start with the, the non-alcoholic mm-hmm. sake. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. So this one here is uh, actually brewed in Tokyo. Okay. Um, so there is sake brewing in Tokyo, but it's not one of the more famous regions. Okay. So uh, around Ky- Kyoto, the Nara region is a little bit okay. more famous, but this one is still really nice. Nice. And uh, this one here isn't traditional sake. Okay. It's got it's got some twist in it. Okay. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what you think. But cheers. Did you just shot that? <laughs> Let's go. Let's bring the. Oh, I give bring I a have, bottle. I have to shot it now <laughs> too. I don't bring a bottle. This is this is good. It's good, but right? I, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. So this one, yeah, I didn't know non-alcoholic sake existed before mm-hmm. I started doing this, mm-hmm. um, but I'm surprised at like how good it is. So that one's kind of like a little bit gingery. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Japanese cuisine and the drinks—they're always they're always good. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're always pretty good. All right, so. Let's focus back mm-hmm. to the back to the topic. Yeah. So as I said, you're you're co-founder of Treg. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to just maybe give a little bit about sure. why you started Treg and you know what the what the company does? Oh yeah. Talent? Initially, the ideas of Treg came from our own frustration, right? We were engineers and we were spending a lot of time in reviewing other people's code, and because we were also like treated code reviews as a very sacred place. Why? Because a lot of tribal knowledge gets automated there, like not automated, like spun up there. A lot of discussions are going there, et cetera, et cetera, right? But it's, it, it is time-consuming, and it is time-consuming from a um, very high-paid jobs, right? Uh, senior engineers, leadership, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, we thought, okay, if we do have large language models, how we can try at least to automate the process? So we've built this agent, which, which takes natural language um, rules written by other engineers, and it matches to the changed code, right? So it's, 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 in our language, it's, it's the diff. So it matches to the diff, and if the rules are failing, we're flagging it. If they're not failing, we're just passing it, right? So an, a senior engineer, when comes into the review process, they can see that the, out of, let's say, 100 rules, only 10 failed, and you know what to expect from the diff, right? So you know what you're doing there. So with that, we're shrinking the time from those people uh, during the review process. Yeah, that's interesting, because I think one of the key things to take away from that is that you're not necessarily trying to replace the human yeah. or mm-hmm. remove the human. Because mm-hmm. I always get... I always get a little bit skeptical uh-huh. when I hear this, right? Because of this, you know, like automated uh, employees and all yeah, that. Like the last thing I want is ChatGPT <laughs> just going rogue and doing things, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't want ChatGPT reviewing code either. But this is interesting. It's, it's like assisting. Mm-hmm. It's trying to help you do it. Uh, I want to hone in on one of the things I you said. Uh, and you talked about rule sets. Now, when I think about rules... Mm-hmm. And obviously, I have a bit of a background in security. I really think of like fixed rule sets mm-hmm. here, you know, which which are deterministic, mm-hmm. pass fail. Yeah, you mentioned rules, but you also mentioned natural language, exactly. human uh-huh. language in uh-huh. that. Can you dive into a little bit of sure. of that? Sure, sure, sure. So. Um, one of the ideas is that first, uh, large language models are here for us to help um, in terms of helping us bridge the natural language into the linting rule generation part. At first, we could have just built a natural language bridge towards from the uh, from just plain English into, let's say, AST grep rules. But it's not enough because those kind of tools are limited in their nature. They're doing only linting stuff and, and linting is by far very limited into styling and formatting issues, right? So at first, we're like, okay, if you're coming into the diff, 
you you want to you know is this doing this or that it's that's the mindset that you're coming into the review process mm. so why not connect to that actual mindset that the senior engineers are coming into the review process and just try to lower it down to the basis of just of of how the pro, how, how the diff was written like how the how the actual feature was implemented etc so that's why we thought natural language interface would be the best one um but of course i mean engineers are very uh, very comfortable using any configurations, mm-hmm. but natural language is just given to us, right? Yeah, yeah. De- I mean, uh, definitely. And I, and I feel like we're getting more and more down natural language mm-hmm. areas. It's easier mm-hmm. to understand. You mentioned something else in there that I want to hone in on. Now, one of the great things about having a podcast is that you get to ask dumb questions <laughs> yeah. that you want to know the answer to, but you're too embarrassed to ask someone. <laughs> so this is going to be one of those moments. So for the audience's benefit, mm-hmm. maybe you want to go into a little bit about kind of the difference between code quality and linting, because you mentioned linting in the last, in the last kind of yeah, uh, yeah. question, and I'm curious to understand, is there a difference between the two? Okay. So uh, linting is a, it is a part of the whole code quality system, if, if we, uh, methodology, if we can say so, mm-hmm. right? I think the linting was the very first workflow automation that we as engineers had. Which is doing this. Let's say I wrote a program and I'm writing a very small other program, a small program, which checks some of the stuff that I wrote in my first program, um, which is very um, deterministic. It, it scans the whole code statically, which is known as static code analysis. Um, and it reads the, let's say, Python code and checks if the variable namings are correct, if the formatting is good, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's a good way for, for a team of engineers to work in a, in a, in the same way, essentially, right? Mm. But linters are very limited in their nature. They cannot go and lint business logic. They can check basic security issues, but they can never go into uh, having the source code, getting the information from the infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not dynamic by, by yeah. nature, right? So they're limited. Yeah, no, I, there's so much parallels in in security mm-hmm. that we have in, in this area too, where mm-hmm. yeah, SaaS tools yeah. have gone through six years of having a very bad name because they've been extremely noisy, right? You know, and then you find out they're flagging on a function that's yeah. vulnerable, but the function is not really doing anything. All of these kind uh-huh. of stuff. Exactly. Um, and now we're at a point where we can actually start going deeper into this mm-hmm. using the help of AI and stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is where we're heading also in the direction of exactly. the code quality. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's 100% the same. Because like um, right now, the importance of code quality, it's number one priority for a lot of organizations right now yeah. because there is two options. When we embrace AI code generation, that means we do not guardrail the AI code generation. That means we create new ways to help the AI-generated code reach to production. Uh, it's it's pretty much the same as the it's it's roughly the same example as with the cars. When we had the cars, we do not uh, we do not change the cars to to drive on a on, on top of mountains, etc. We build roads, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. pretty much the same. If if we do have AI code generation, which helps us a lot, we do not go and change how we we guardrail or change the code generation itself. We invent new ways to help more and more AI generated code to to reach to production. I want to go into. Uh, what some of the code, the AI code generated things. Uh-huh. Uh, this may be a battle, a battle subject. So let's uh-huh. let's try, let's get into our second sake. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we before we get into this. Yeah. All right. So here we have a sake. This is from the Nada region. Okay. Uh, this is actually my favorite sake that I've tried. I thought I'd try and do different sakes every episode, but I've I've decided. I just love it. I just like this one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from Nada. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Nada is famous for, the region in Japan, mm-hmm. is it has very soft water. And okay. you'll you'll notice that you'll notice in that the previous one will be it's quite sharp mm-hmm. flavor. This will be very like soft okay. going into it. Okay, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Let's try. It. And you you can shot it if you want, but the the, to... the general recommendation is sippy. <laughs> yeah, the smell is really good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this is... the, the sake is quite dangerous because, like, it's it's not crazy alcoholic, yeah. but man, it catches up on you. All right, okay, we're lubricated up now. Let's get into the the controversial topic of uh-huh. uh, AI code gen. One of the things I'm curious about mm-hmm. is, okay, right now, AI generated code is it better in terms of a code quality perspective mm-hmm. than humans? Mm-hmm. Or is it worse? Like, what is oh. what is the general consensus that's, here? That's a, that's that's one 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 other really good question. So I would say, you can you can treat it as a smart genius level smart autistic junior engineer 
who who does not know anything besides point in time understanding of what is going on. So it's like you imagine you bring this engineer and then you say, implement this. They will 100% just really good. And they will just write that, right? I'm talking about the, uh, the latest models, et cetera, right? Yeah. And I'm not talking about one-shotting a huge features. Just a basic thing, right? That the model will perform really good. But the problem is the peripheral information that the models have. Because like you can imagine that en- organizations hire engineers for 10 years. They leave the the knowledge from day one from the from the day they're exiting the company right so that's a it's 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 a flow of information and not a point in time issue and that's what the problem with the code generation right now is they're really good at point in time generation right mm. because they do not have the context so if we if we only speak about the point in time generation they'll be pretty good but not the not big features because they need other context right yeah um so that's that's the main difference on how we can treat them right I like that. I like that. It's a genius level junior engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a bit of a little Seymour, but I, I, I quite like it. Yeah. Okay, so that's where we are right now, latest uh-huh. models. And we talked about this in the last episode too, is that kind of these, these models actually don't continue to learn. They're trained and then their knowledge is fixed from mm-hmm. that point on. Let's say that the next evolution comes within mm-hmm. five years, 10 years down the mm-hmm. track. Is code quality still a thing? Are, are the models so good now that it's like everything is perfect? Um, yeah, that's 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 another good question. So it's like there there is an interesting paradox that I th- love to think about, right? So it's like the one in one hand we have the models that are getting better and better and better. So one, do we actually need to review what what they've written, mm-hmm. or it's the opposite? If the model is that good, they it it can review itself, but in parallel we try to understand okay if um if if it's that good. Do we actually just need to have one single approve button uh, to see the changes and then approve it and then it goes into the production? So that's an interesting paradox to have. I do not think we can answer that right now. Uh, but my take is I'm very bullish on the models. I, I 100% mm-hmm. think to see the world where the whole code is generated by AI and we just dare to monitor it. Yeah. The monitoring part actually starts to be the quality gating. And I guess too, like Eric, the, the where I think of it too is often when... AI models generating code, they're generating code sometimes with limited, limited context. Uh-huh. And, and I think like code quality, mm-hmm. and especially like linting, can differ between them. So yeah. we could end up in, in a position where like it's a patchwork of yeah. beautifully written code that uh-huh. is almost impossible to understand yeah, yeah, because it, yeah. it doesn't follow standards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the interesting things I've been thinking about and I was actually involved in a lawsuit against OpenAI. I wasn't. It was unintentional. Okay. Okay. They quoted me and brought me in as an expert, but I like, I don't know why. Uh, but we, we're talking about polymorphic malware, okay, and basically malware that can rewrite itself. Mm-hmm. And the the question that I kind of posed was: Right now, these AI, AI models are writing Python. They're writing JavaScript. Mm-hmm. Do we get to a point where they're writing binaries or a language oh. that doesn't like you know? Because at this point, the only reason why they're writing uh, that mm-hmm. is, well, I guess one, they've been trained on it, but two, humans still need to look at it and understand exactly. it. What happens when we don't? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, do we get to, do you, do you, do you see that where, where it's writing direct binaries or it's, uh, it's, it's so interesting because what is the last time you were checking, let's say you you wrote a Python code for, for doing some script. What is the last time you've checked the machine code? That like, uh, it's like, I do not do that. Right? Yeah. When I write JavaScript for a web application, when I write JavaScript for some other things, or, I, or you write Rust or somebody writes Go, we do not look into the binary code anymore. We, oh, yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I used to, I used to. No, 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 do you, do our grandparents might, right? They don't know, right? But it's like, you can imagine that then we have compilers, right? Um, we can treat the language models as the compilers themselves, right? Mm. Why do we actually need to look into the generated Python code yeah. when we can read intermediary representation of a natural language, which is much, which which makes pretty much everybody on the earth engineers, yeah. right? No, I, I and I kind of completely agree yeah. with that, right? And at this point, is like it's it's terrifying. Can you imagine just getting the binary and running it, just yeah. like hoping for the best? Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I guess at some point, mm-hmm. you know, when we've all forgotten how to write Python. Yeah. I have a I have another fighting question here. Uh-huh. Okay, so I want to kind of get a little bit back on track with uh, code quality. What uh-huh. Treg is doing, I I love the concept mm-hmm. natively written rules for code quality and having these separate rule sets out. And 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 I get the advantages of it, but I want to play devil's advocate yeah. and talk about the, the disadvantages of yes. it. 
are, are there risks in not having this deterministic approach? As in, in security, you know, the, the risk is by not having static rules, something will, will be missed, right? And, I, and, the, and the same can apply here. Exactly. And there is no any, there is no any AI application in the world which, on top of large language models which can pretend to be 100% deterministic. No, because the LLMs themselves, they're by design, they're non-deterministic. Yeah. So our job is to make it deterministic to at least 99% of the way. And if we're not sure with the 1%, we just ask a human to make sure that it's fine or not, right? And... In, in the application world, in the LLM application world, those 1% approval rates for from the humans, 2 3%, those are completely fine because you're automating a lot, like 90% of the job, yeah. right? So if, if you're not sure about something, just ask, just prompt a human saying, we, we are thinking like this. Yeah. Is it correct or not, right? So uh, I can confidently say that we're doing deterministic determinism like in a ninety in a ninety eight ninety nine percent of the of, yeah. the of the range, right? But we we still have this small percentage where we're not sure if if the rule matches or not. And of the day, you just prompt a human. I was doing some research. This is a while ago. I think like two versions of Claude mm -hmm. ago, where I asked the same prompt to generate the same code yeah. like twenty different times, uh -huh. and it came up with like different very like, like ten different variations. Good. Yeah. yeah. Which was which was uh, really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we're kind of finishing the the serious part. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna refill uh, refill our, our sake here. Yeah. Mm, thank you. So the game is called Would You Rather. Okay. Um, and uh, basically, it's pretty self explanatory. I'm gonna uh -huh. ask you two two options. You have to you have to pick one. Okay. Okay. Would you rather only vibe code? So you can't write any yeah. code yourself you have to you can prompt or no no ai and you have to use a notepad 100 <laughs> percent notepad the 100 notepad <laughs> this is sake speaking no, 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 no vibe coding would you rather mm -hmm. deploy to production at 6 p.m on a friday okay every friday okay or deploy regularly uh -huh. but with no staging environment um, so you I would go down to a virtual take. I will go with not having. Um, I, I'm comfortable with not having staging environment. Oh, <laughs> Yolo, it's like one life to live. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Go. And with vibe coded publication, <laughs> vibe coded yeah. push to production. Yeah, no say. That's actually how most vibe coding is done. So exactly, you know, it's, yeah. Not, yeah. it's not. It's not. We've got to embrace the future, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All your API keys are hard coded in your source code. Okay. Or. You have no firewalls on your application. Ooh, um, let's just let's just put our bet on the on the on the humankind and think that they will not uh, steal our API keys and just go with the first version. Okay, no. all right. Now, well, that's all I had for you. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, well, it's, been, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a blast. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Cheers, cheers. And that's it for today. We're going to be coming at you with a very special episode next week coming from Black Hat in Las Vegas. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you 